Okay, in this video, we're going to use trigonometry to solve a triangle using trig ratios. Now, what exactly does it mean to solve a triangle? Well, it can mean a few things, but for our purposes, solving a triangle means that we're going to find each of the sides, the lengths of the sides of a triangle, and each of the angles in a triangle. Okay, so solving it means we're going to basically be able to fill in all the information that might be missing here. Now, let's go ahead and start with the angles first. Now, what do we know about the angles? We know from the uh, triangle theorem that the angles in any triangle will always add up to 180 degrees. Now, in this particular case, we know that using trigonometry that we always will have two of the three angles that we need. We always know that, for example, it has to have to be a right triangle, so we know that this angle here is 90 degrees. We were given 51, so we know that if we add 90 plus 51, we should be able to get angle BAC, right? So let me just go ahead and write this down. So angle 90 plus angle 51 plus angle then BAC, which will be this angle here, should equal 180 degrees. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that. 90 plus 51 is 141 plus angle BAC equals 180, which means that basically subtract 141 from each side and we get that angle BAC should be equal to 39 degrees. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and fill that in. Okay, now that we have that, we actually have a number of options for finding, uh, we already have side AB, but now we have a number of options for finding AC or side BC. Then we have all the trig ratios available to us. Now let's just go ahead and remind ourselves what those trig ratios are. Again, using our mnemonic device, right, called SOHCAHTOA, right? This is how we decide, this is how we remember what the trig ratios are. We know that the sine of any angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, right? So opposite side over the hypotenuse. We know that CAH, the cosine of any angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, over the hypotenuse, and we know that the tangent is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So tangent of any angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, if we want to find, for example, side AC, we have a couple of options here. We could take, for example, let's go with the uh, tangent. We could say that the tangent of 51 degrees should be equal to, uh, did I do that right? No, excuse me, if we want to say that the, um, yeah, no, no, we did that right. If we want to say that the, uh, uh, we're gonna use the sine, I'm sorry, we're gonna use the sine function. That the sine of 51 should be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, okay? So we're gonna say that the sine of 51 degrees, right, because we're here, is equal to the opposite side, which is 10, over the hypotenuse, which we do not know, which is what we're looking for. Now, in order to get that, we need to look up the sine of 81 degrees, and this is where we go to our calculator. Now, one thing I want to make sure that you remember how to do is make sure that this your calculator is in degrees and not radians. If you click on the mode button here, right there, you can check and see whether your hypotenuse is in mode or not, or excuse me, is in degrees. And let me just see if I can make this a little bit easier to see. There it is. Right, see where it says radians and modes? Make sure that uh, degrees, rather, make sure that degrees is actually highlighted, okay? So, we want to do the sine. Here we go. Let's 
Let's clear this and get ready to go. So we're gonna press the sign, which is right there. So we're gonna say sign 51. And that's what we're getting. I'm trying to see whether this is easy to see here. There he is. The sine of 51 degrees is equal to 0.77714, et cetera, et cetera. Go to three decimal places. That's usually a pretty good indicator. So 0.777. is equal to 10 over x. Just replace sine of 51 with 0.777. Let's go ahead and cross multiply here. And you should get 0.777x is equal to 10 times 1. Let's divide both sides by 0.777. You get 10 divided by 0.777. And that should give you the length of divided by 0.777, and that should give you the length of the hypotenuse. And in this case, it's 12.87. We're just gonna use three figures here, even though it's not quite correct. Significant figures would only be two, but we're gonna use 12.9, okay? All right, so X is equal to 12.9, all right? So, now look what we have. We have basically two sides of a right triangle. We could use the Pythagorean theorem, and we could say that 10 squared plus y squared will equal to the hypotenuse squared, which we just figured out. Or we can actually just use another trig function to find the y. So let's do that, actually, just because we're practicing our trig function. So let's just say we're going to use 51 degrees again, but we want to find y this time. So, are we going to use the tangent? Are we going to use the cosine? Are we going to use the sine? Let's see here. Since we want this to be in our equation, we're going to say, let's just use tangent. We're going to say the tangent of 51 degrees is going to be equal to, remember the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So, the opposite over the adjacent. So, we're going to be say 10 over y. We're going to look up the tangent of 51. Now, the tangent of 51 degrees is equal to 1.234. We're just going to keep it at 23. We're going to cross multiply again, and you get 1.23y equal to 10 times 1. Let's divide by 1.23 on both sides. 10 divided by 1.23, and 1 divided, 10 divided by 1.23 is equal to 8.13, 8.13. And again, I'm using three figures, even though technically we should only be using two significant figures, but we're going to, I just wanted to show you that these um, ratios, I'm just going to use three whenever I do trig ratios, okay? So we have just solved this triangle. We figured out each of the degrees of the inside, of the degrees, right? And we figured out each of the sides of the triangle as well. And you can make sure that it's correct by using the Pythagorean theorem and see if these numbers actually work. Okay, hope well, that was helpful to you.